In this uh, video, we'll discuss PCR, that is polymerase chain reaction. This technique was given by Carrie B. Muniz. This PCR or polymerase chain reaction is basically used for gene or DNA amplification. Whenever we use the term amplification, we are normally talking about the sound amplification. Here amplification means the number is to be increased. Suppose we find some DNA at a crime scene, maybe from a blood smear. And we know DNA can be isolated only from WBCs. RBCs don't have nucleus, platelets don't have nucleus. And as compared to RBCs, the number of WBCs is anyways very, very less. So whatever few WBCs we get, that is the only DNA or proof that we have from that crime scene. If we start using that much DNA only and if something goes wrong, then complete proof or whatever clue we have that is lost. So we want that DNA to be amplified. That means their number to be increased to a large number. It can be up to a million. So that if you're using some DNA for your research work or for your experimentation and if something goes wrong you still have the same DNA. This PCR is completed in three steps. The first is known as denaturation. Denaturation is separation of the two strands of DNA. The DNA that we get is a double stranded structure. Suppose this is the third carbon or three prime, the fifth here, the three prime here and five. They are anti-parallel. We need to separate them so that on each of these two strands new DNA can be synthesized. So in denaturation we can use hydrochloric acid dilute, we can use a dilute base or we can use a temperature, high temperature. The, temp, uh, the process which is used for denaturation commonly is treating this DNA at high temperature. So this temperature is about 90 to 94 degrees Celsius. And the DNA has to be kept at this temperature for a very, very short period of time because we want only the hydrogen bonds to be broken. If this temperature is given for a longer period of time, the DNA that is, even the phosphodiester bonds would be damaged. So, 90 to 94 is the temperature range. Normally, we talk of 92 degrees Celsius as the most optimum temperature for denaturation. After this, the two DNA strands get separated. The polarity has to be remembered because the next step, this polarity is very, very important. So, by denaturation, two strands have been separated. The bonds which get broken are only hydrogen bonds. Step number two is known as annealing. Annealing basically means hybridization. We want on these two DNA strands, the separated DNA strands, new DNA strands should be synthesized. To synthesize a new DNA, there has to be a primer which is required. Primer is a small fragment of RNA which would initiate the DNA or nucleotides coming there. Now, it is interesting which end of the parent strand should the RNA primer be formed. Let us take this example, the first upper strand here. If RNA primer is formed here, which we know is a small segment of RNA nucleotides, then it would have its fifth prime here because it has to be uh, anti-parallel and here would be the third prime. Third prime means on the third OH that is functional group will be free and the new nucleotide can come and bind on this same side. 
DNA or RNA, whichever molecule is synthesized, it always grows towards its third prime. So five prime towards three prime. So it is going to be from five moving towards its three. So new nucleotide can come and bind here. So primer will always come at the third prime of the parent strand. In this case, the primer would come here. That is the third prime of the parent strand. The primers end on this side would be five and on this side would be the third carbon. And as we know, third carbon has again OH. So new nucleotide can come and bind here. So when the new DNA is formed, it grows towards its third prime. So this is primer formation. What all things are required here? You would require RNA nucleotides. We would require enzymes and this step takes place at a lower temperature, much lower as compared to the first one. The temperature is about 50 to 60 degrees Celsius, normally 56, approximately 56, 57 is the optimum temperature for this to take place. So now we have a primer that is RNA and why it is known as Annealing, that is hybridization, you have a DNA-RNA hybrid, that's why, annealing. Step number three is extension. In extension, the DNA nucleotides would come and bind with the primer. Extension, let us draw the same structure here. This is the third prime, 5, 3 and 5 and we made these primers here. So this was the 5 and third, here also the fifth end and this is the third end. Now DNA nucleotides would come. Before we actually show the DNA synthesis here, let us talk about what all things are required in this process. This step takes place again at a higher temperature. 72 degrees Celsius is the optimum temperature at which this takes place. We would require an enzyme for DNA synthesis. This enzyme is known as DNA polymerase. In our body, DNA polymerases do not work at 72 degrees. Our body temperature is 37. So above this, all enzymes get denatured. So we would need an enzyme which can work at such a high temperature. It should be thermostable or thermoliable. Such an enzyme is isolated from an archae bacteria, a thermophilus bacteria. The name is Thermus aquaticus. This is a thermophilus bacterium from which we obtain the DNA polymer. This bacterium, it is an archaea bacterium, it grows in hot water springs or it survives in hot water springs where the temperature is up to 100 degrees Celsius. So if it can survive at 100 degrees, all the enzymes this cell must be having must be thermostable. And from here we isolate this DNA polymerase. It is known as TAC polymerase. That means we have an enzyme which can work at this 72 degrees Celsius at higher temperature. And then we have to add DNA polymerases, or oh sorry, DNA nucleotides. Enzyme is also there. The raw material that is nucleotides are also there. And these nucleotides now will get added to this primer. And this is how our DNA nucleotide or new DNA strand would be synthesized. It is growing towards its third end. So when it comes to this last part, this is going to be the third. So now we have two starting from one parent strand, a new DNA synthesized from the other parent strand, other DNA synthesized. We started with a single DNA, double stranded DNA. We separated those two, got a primer attached to it, 
and on the primer the DNA is synthesized. So starting from one now we have two. If we send these two DNAs again for denaturation, these two will separate, these two will separate on both. In the next step, primer would be formed and in extension, all four separated strands would work as parent strands. So every time we repeat this process, the number of DNA gets doubled. Three steps. First is denaturation where we separate. Temperature is important which we have to remember. First step takes place at a very high temperature around 92. Second is annealing which takes place at a slightly lower temperature that is around 50-56 that is the temperature. Extension, third step, two important things to be remembered here. This requires an enzyme which is capable of working at a very high temperature. We isolate it from Thermos Aquaticus. The name of the enzyme is TAC polymerase. It is a DNA polymerase and it works at 72. This is the optimum temperature. But in many books, the range is given as 70 to 74. But 72 is the optimum temperature and starting with one DNA, if we just do these three steps, we get two DNA strands, from two we can get four and so on. We can do this repetition or perform this PCR till we reach a million DNAs. So from few DNA strands which we get from anywhere, we can get whatever number of DNA that we need for that experiment or to be preserved for later use. So this is polymerase chain reaction which is used for DNA amplification.